Hey guys, it's Zach Messer from Messer Baits, and today I'm going to be showing you how to paint a bluegill pattern. I know a lot of guys are getting into custom painting. It's great for a side hustle or just to have fun. But let's get started. Okay, so we're going to line the bait up facing away from us, where the only thing the paint is going to hit is the very bottom. We're not trying to get this very dark. We just want to have something to go off of for when we add paint to the bottom. I'm also doing this on live, guys, so if you're wondering why there's a voiceover. <laughs> so now that we have the bottom painted white, we're gonna add yellow to the sides. I have my PSI set on 20 for this entire video, so there's no confusion. So when you start on the sides, we, we almost want the bait to be translucent, so we're just kind of working you work your finger back and forth, just letting the paint spray as if you were just smacking the top of a paint can. You can practice doing this on paper or wherever you need to do it, but there's nothing perfect in nature. So, you know, this isn't perfect, but I've sped this up so you can see what I'm talking about here, but I get the bait covered completely. And you can always go back over it on spots that are darker or lighter. You don't want to use too much paint. Pretty much, once you can see yellow, you're good. Make sure to clean out your brush after every one of these steps. So now I'm adding green, just using two or three drops. Don't use more than that or you'll just be wasting your paint. Now I'm lining the bait up to where it's directly in front of me, and I'm just gonna spray across the top. Now. When you spray across the top, it's just going to drop over the edges. So you're going to have to put your bait at a 45 degree angle and just spray down the side of the bait, making sure not to hit the bottom. And you can look on both sides of the bait, both sides of the bait and see, you know, where your paint's hitting as you're going. Don't get too carried away. Take your time with this step and then hit the nose. biggest thing here is just taking your time make sure it's even never shoot straight at the bait so now I have the metallic mesh that you can purchase at about any Hobby Lobby or order it off of Amazon and I'm gonna fold it over that way it's actually double sided so it's covering double the amount of what it usually does once I get that laid down flat like I want I'm just gonna roll the bait up in it and this is pretty simple. Just pull it tight, put some clamps on. These clamps are from Dollar General. Those are from Walmart. Just really wherever I find them the cheapest. Go through a lot of them. I like the larger ones because I feel like, well, I shake <laughs> as bad as it is. But I feel like I can hold on to those better. But you just want to make sure you pull it tight. You can't have it loose anywhere or your paint's not gonna give you the pattern you're looking for. So once you have it tight, just lay the bait down on its side and uh, heat set it one more time. After that, you're gonna, you're gonna want the bait facing directly at you. You can use one of these little clamps. It's also bought on Amazon, or you can just hold it either way. And I'm taking detail sepia here and I'm going over top the center of the bait and down each side. So at this point, you're actually wanting to hit the green and the yellow. Just do the same thing on each side. And once you have it to the darkness of your locking, it's completely up to you. Go ahead and spray the top of the bait so that your colors fade even better. Make sure to heat set. Every time you spray, heat set. And the reason I'm saying that is if you heat set it, you can't mess it up. You can always add, but you can't take away. So when you go to take this metallic mesh off, the most important thing is to pull it off fast because the paint will actually stick to it. And always check the bait over after each step, make sure it still looks good. 
So this is just a hairbrush. Um, I think I stole this from my wife. I'm not even gonna lie, I don't even think I bought that one. But I'm taking that detail sepia we just used, laying it on the bait, and spraying down each side. It's as simple as that. Lay the bait down, spray down each side. Now I'm gonna come across the crop, come across the top one more time, just cause I want it to be darker. And I even make it a little bit more darker. So this is pretty much up to you. You don't, ha you don't have to do that step, but as you can see, this is what it looks like right now. We're starting to look like a bluegill now. So just to give it a little bit more realism, I take a toothbrush, just take an old toothbrush, throw some brown paint on the toothbrush, and then you're just gonna flick it with your finger until you get all those little spots on the bait. Put as many as you want. Now when it comes to the throat patch, you're gonna start spraying at the bottom of the bait and then come up to the bait and stop. Don't get carried away with this. I mean, unless you're wanting a huge patch, but I usually do it twice and uh, I get the darkness or lightness that I want. After you heat set that paint, it's gonna change. So now we're gonna cut out the earpiece of the bluegill. So you just draw it on. It pretty much looks like the nipple that's on a bottle. That's the best way to explain it. And just make sure it lines up. You have lines on the crankbait so you can tell how big to make it. And just so our colors pop a little better, our baby blue that we're gonna be putting on, we're gonna use white. We're just gonna spray right on the very edge of the tape. It doesn't have to be perfect. You really don't want it to be perfect because then it, it won't look right. But just get enough white on there to where the blue is gonna pop uh, down towards the bottom of the gill plate because that's where most of the lighter blue is. We're just gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. A lot of repetition here. Now we're coming in with our baby blue, which is just white mixed with blue. You don't have to buy it. We're just fanning it on there. Like I said a minute ago, it's like smacking the top of a spray paint can. Just move that trigger back and forth. So that way it kind of splotches on there. Um, you don't want it to be straight. So now we're gonna come in with the black and all we're doing is lining back up that little earpiece. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Take your time on this. Shoot on the paint before you shoot on the bait or you will mess it up. Cause still to this day, this is where you screw up and you have to start over. Don't get carried away here, take your time. And then you can see where I scratch the head because I'm kind of in a hurry. So I just take that black and I go over it a little bit. Kind of change the look of the bait, but I'm okay with that. Now we're gonna put some eyes on. I just ordered these eyes from Amazon. Uh, they come in a variety pack, pretty much any color you can think of. But I, I like a red on a bluegill. I think it just uh, makes the bait look more lifelike. Nothing special here if you want to. Um, if you're going to clear coat uh, with like KBS, you don't have to glue them. But if you're going to paint on clear coat, then definitely glue them. Just pretty much push them down on there. And you can see that the eyes really bring the bait to life. To be honest, I can't wait to throw this thing. So now taking the tape off. You wanna pull the tape off uh, at a downward angle, that way it doesn't have any chance of hurting your paint. 
but pretty much when you get to this point you just need to look the bait over make sure you don't want to add any more dots or if you want to make it any darker you just put the brown back in and go back over it again I really like the way this one turned out. The biggest thing is to not use a lot of paint. Now I'm dipping the KBS Diamond Clear Coat here. You can see that this really is what makes the bait pop, brings the colors out. Make, makes the eyes look great. So it usually takes this about 24 hours before you can touch it it takes about two days before it's completely dry but I always put a drip pin on the bottom give it a little shake to get off any access and she's done <laughs>